I have a couple of these gun vault safes. Generally speaking, I like them. But one day, this deluxe model just stopped working. I entered my code, but instead of the door popping open, it just made a whirring sound. Hi, I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. And this is how I repaired the Gun Vault Deluxe Model 1000. First, of course, I called the manufacturer, and while they have a five-year warranty, they don't provide any parts or service after that, so I was on my own. Fortunately, the key access still worked. I started by removing the control box, which takes a right angle drive and number two Phillips screwdriver and some smaller hands than mine. There are three screws that retain the control box and they go in these holes. Testing it outside of the safe didn't reveal anything new. So to get a little bit more working room, I removed the power supply jack. The box lid just snaps on and is held by a stud in each corner. So I gently removed the cover to see if I could get a better look at the insides. I could see right away there was a braided wire cable attached to the motor shaft. The cable had broken and it was pretty obvious I needed to remove the box to work on it. The lid removes easily and there is a ribbon connector that just slides out of the connection on the circuit board. The speaker is plugged into the circuit board and with the speaker unplugged I could separate the box from the safe. So the way this works is the motor spins and pulls on the wire cable and it actuates this spring-loaded arm thus camming the lock and unlocking the safe. I have to tell you as an experienced engineer and as reluctant as I am to disparage anybody else's design this is the most uh, unorthodox method I could think of to perform a linear actuation. Why they just didn't use a linear solenoid is beyond me. But this is what we have to work with. The cable is crimped to the shaft, so I have to remove the crimp and figure out how to attach a new cable. I put a deep cut in the crimp on the side where the cable was and a shallow cut in the side where the shaft was so I didn't damage the shaft. Then I can just pry off the crimp. It looks like they may have added some epoxy to help hold the cable. I wasn't confident I could replace the crimp, so I found these RC model two millimeter motor shaft connectors it seemed like they would work. They'll attach with set screws and leave a hole to attach the cable. Uh, and I also found some steel fishing leader that could be cut and crimped to length. Uh, the 47 strand is more flexible and I'm going to try the 90 pound test to start with. Uh, this size leader uses a number three crimping sleeve and a special crimping pliers which fortunately I'm a fisherman so I've got those things already. This two millimeter motor shaft uh, must be common because the connector fitted perfectly. I fashioned up the new cable. If I was gonna do it again, I'd probably make it a bit shorter, but this one worked just fine. I was a little worried about the mass of the connector, so I tightened the set screws as tight as I could. And we'll see if it holds up. A quick test seemed to work. So, time to put it back together. First I plug in the speaker. Then the box cover. Re-identify those three holes. Install the power plug. The keypad. The control box. And a quick test. It looks like I'm back in business.
I hope you found that educational. I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. Until next time, keep training, join the NRA, and be safe out there. Thanks. First, find the programming button inside the safe underneath the keypad. Press it once and the keypad light will turn green. Then enter your code, then press the programming button a second time and the keypad light will turn red. Then enter your code a second time and finally press the programming button a third time and if you've done it right the keypad light will flash green and go blank.